Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last lecture, we had seen what is variable length subnet masking. In today's lecture, we will see solved problem number 1 in VLSM that is variable length subnet masking. Let's dive into the question directly. Here is the question. Subnet 192.168.10.0 slash 24 to address the network which is given in the question, which is given in the scenario by using the most efficient addressing possible. So we are not going to do subnetting based on the FLSM approach which is fixed length subnet masking approach. Rather we are going to do with VLSM approach. It means the subnetting what we are going to do is going to be for 60 users and the subnet mask will be a different subnet mask here. And whereas the subnet mask what we are going to create or generate here is going to be a different subnet mask when we compare it with here. We will see how to solve this problem in this lecture. Before going into the solution part, here is my question. How many networks are here in this scenario? Pause this video for a while and please find out how many networks are here in this scenario. I hope you are done. If your answer is 3, you are wrong. In this scenario, we have 6 networks. Here is network number 1 which connects 60 users. Here is network number 2 which connects 20 users. And here is network number 3 which connects 20 users. Plus, here is another network. Can you see? Here is another network which needs two IP addresses. One IP address to this interface and another IP address to this interface. If these two routers wants to communicate with each other through this link, then these two IP addresses should be belonging to the same network. So this is network number 4 and this is network number 5. That is one IP address to this interface and another IP address to this interface. And this is network number 6 which needs two IP addresses. One is for this interface and another one for this interface. So a total of 6 networks are here. When we say 60 users or 20 users, obviously it means 60 IP addresses or 20 IP addresses. Or 60 hosts or 20 hosts. Let's solve this problem by knowing the key idea behind this. The key idea is always start with the largest subnet. We know in this scenario, this is the largest subnet. This network needs only 20 IP addresses and this is also going to take only 20 IP addresses or 20 users. Whereas these three links are going to take two IP addresses each. So when we compare all the networks, this is the biggest network. So we are going to start the subnetting with the largest network. That is this network. In this example, the largest network is 60. Always remember, we are going to start with the largest subnet first. So we know how to solve the subnetting problem. The same methodology we are going to follow for VLSM also, but with small changes. I will tell you where that change has to be considered. And we know basically subnetting involves five steps and we are now in step number one. Step number one is identify the class of the IP address and note the default subnet mask. We know in the question it is given as 192.168.10.0. So obviously it is class C and the default subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. We are done with step number 1. We will now move on to step number 2. In step number 2, we are required to convert the default subnet mask into binary. When we convert that default subnet mask into binary, we get all 1s in the first 3 octets and 0 in the last octet which is the 4th octet. Because the default subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. We are done with step number 2 also. Let's now move on to step number 3. In step number 3, we are required to note the number of hosts required per subnet and find the subnet generator and octet position. And step number 3 is a very important step as far as VLSM is concerned because our requirement is going to change for every network we are going to address. In one network, it's 60. In another network, it's 20. In another network, it's 2 only, right? So we are going to focus more on step number 3. As I had already mentioned the key idea which is starting with the largest subnet first. So we are going to start with the largest subnet. So how many hosts per subnet we require now? We are going to address the 60 users network. Obviously the number of hosts is going to be 60. And when we convert that 60 into binary, we get 111100. And this is the binary equivalent for the number 60. So if we keenly analyze, we can't get the decimal number 60 without 6 bits in binary. So minimum bits we require for the number 60 in decimal is 6 bits in binary. 
and how to find the subnet generator it's very simple we are going to reserve six zeros from the right right so we are going to reserve six zeros from the right so obviously six zeros means when we move from the right it's going to take the fourth octet so we had reserved six zeros and the remaining places should be filled up with ones so i have filled ones also then what is this subnet generator which is the first one we are encountering when we move from the right to the left this is this one right and what is the decimal position of this one 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 so the subnet generator is going to be 64 and where is this subnet generator this subnet generator is in the octet position 4 because the subnet generator is in the fourth octet now we are done with step number 3 also now we will generate the new subnet mask for the largest network which is the 60 users network in this example. So let's generate the new subnet mask and the new subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.128 plus 64 which is 192. Please note here the new subnet mask is 255.255.255.192 or in slash notation it's 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 2 which is slash 26. Please note this is only for the biggest network which is the network having 60 users in this example. And we are done with step number 4 also and we will now move on to step number 5. Using the subnet generator we will generate the network ranges and these network ranges are the subnet which will be reflecting in the appropriate octet position. We will generate the subnets now. So we know the starting IP address which is given in the question is 192.168.10.0 and in which octet we are going to add the subnet generator it is in the fourth octet right so just add 64 to the fourth octet we will be getting 192.168.10.64 so the second subnet starts with 10.64 the previous subnet obviously ends with 10.63 yes the previous subnet ends with 192.168.10.63 and make a note of this the subnet mask for the first subnet is slash 26. This first subnet is for the network which is having 60 users, right? So we are going to hand over this set of IP addresses to the 60 users network. And coming to the second subnet, in the scenario we know the second subnet is going to take 20 users, right? Let's focus on the 20 users network now because in the scenario we have two 20 users subnet. So in order to solve this, just see we are going to focus on step number 3. So our intention in step number 3 is we are going to subnet for 20 users, right? So when we convert this number 20, we will be getting 10100. So we can't get the decimal number 20 without 5 bits in binary. So the minimum number of required bits is 5 for the requirement 20. So 5 means we are going to reserve 5 zeros, right? So we have reserved 5 zeros and all 1s in the remaining places. And what about the subnet generator? The first one we encounter when we move from right to left. The first one is this. So the position is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So the subnet generator is 32 and this subnet generator is in 4th octet. So we are going to add this 32 to the 4th octet. When we add this 32 to the 4th octet of the second subnet starting address, we will be getting 192.168.10.96. When the third subnet starts with 96, the previous subnet will be ending with 95. And what about the new subnet mask for this second subnetwork? The new subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.224. In other words, it's slash 27. Why 224? It's 192 plus 64 plus 32. In other words, we have 27 ones, right? 27 consecutive ones. And we are going to hand over this second subnet range to the 20 users network. And coming to the third subnetwork range, we are not going to modify anything here because our requirement is still 20 only, right? We know the third subnet starts with 96 and it ends with just add 32 to this, this subnet generator to this, we will be getting 128. So the next subnet, that is the fourth subnet starts with 128 and the previous subnet ends with 127. And this is also slash 27. And we are going to hand over this to another 20 users network. So we have addressed the 60 users network, the 20 users network and another 20 users network. We are left with 3 2 users network, right? The links. Now how to do that? Now the requirement is just 2, right? We need only 2 IP addresses. So when we have the number 2 in decimal 
and the binary equivalent is 1 0, we can't get the decimal number 2 without 2 bits in binary, right? So 2 is the key number here. We are going to reserve two zeros from the right. So I have reserved two zeros and the remaining places are filled up with one. And what is the subnet generator? The first one we encounter when we move from right to left. This is the first one we are encountering. So what is the decimal position of this one? One, two, four. So four is the subnet generator and the octet position is also four. So we are going to add four to the fourth octet. So just add 4 to the 4th octet of the next subnet, we have 128, right? So 128 plus 4 is 132. So the previous subnet will be ending with 131. Then 132 plus 4 is 136. So the previous subnet will be ending with 135. 136 plus 4 is 140. The previous subnet will be ending with 139. And if you observe here, the new subnet mask for the next 3 networks or the next 3 subnets will be slash 30. Why? we have 30 consecutive ones. In other words, the new subnet mask is 255.255.255. All ones means 255. 255 minus 1 minus 2, right? So it's 252. So the new subnet mask is 255.255.255.252 for these three networks. That's why we are using slash 30 for these three networks. And we are going to hand over these IP addresses to the crossover link. Anyway, we will see the scenario again. In the scenario, the first set of IP addresses which is from 10.0 to 10.63, we are going to hand over this to 60 users network which is this network. In the second range that is from 10.64 to 10.95 slash 27 will be given to either this or this. And the third range is from 10.96 to 10.127 slash 27 can be given to either this or this. And the fourth one, fifth one and sixth one can be given to 10.128 to 10.131 slash 30 can be given to this. 10.132 to 10.135 slash 30 can be given to this network. And finally, 10.136 to 10.139 slash 30 can be given to this network. And this is how we need to solve this VLSM subnetting problem. Always remember, start with the largest subnet so that we can sparingly use the IP addresses and we can use the most efficient methodology for addressing the networking scenario problem. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lecture and thank you for watching.